Welcome, everyone. We've got another episode of Vinny Makes the Hall of Fame Case for dot, dot, dot. And this time it is for somebody who I'm totally with him on this one. Uh, Green Bay Packers fans, you're going to be completely big fans of Vinny after this one. We're looking at Lavi Dilweg, uh, a player who was an all-decade team from the 1920s and the member of the first ever class of the Green Bay Packers Hall of Fame. So we're not talking about some nobody like Vinny gave us last week. <laughs> hey, don't say it to Winkenbach. He, he, he's, he's worth $22 billion of his idea. That's what it... He's not worth that. His idea is worth that. Yes, that's correct. He didn't earn anything off of it, though, to be fair. Right. But this is somebody who, even if you're not familiar with him, and I don't expect that most of you would, and that's not a shot at anyone. I'm not all that familiar with him, not, not, not as much as Vinny is. And, and why would, would, would we be? He played in the 20s and the early 30s. But this is someone who was on the Hall of Fame radar as when the Centennial class put out their, their 20 people who made their final cuts, he was one of 10 who didn't make it. So, uh, Vinny, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sort of like turn over. The, it's your show. So I, 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 have to, I have to, before we go into that, though, I have to say, like, when I said, hey, Vinny, who, who are we going to go with next? And then you sent me a picture of, of, of Mr. Dilweg, but I didn't, I don't know him. I, I know him statistically, but I, I didn't know his face. And then you said he's the, what, what did you call him? The, I call him my giga Chad when Dig-a-chad. it comes to seniors. And I think my response is what the fuck is this? <laughs> Cause I don't know what the hell you meant. Okay. There is a, in terms of Gen Z terminology, in terms of Gen Z humor, the term Chad, like the term Karen means for a middle-aged woman that always likes to speak to the manager and says a few off-color things in public, a Chad is someone who's very beefed up and muscular and usually it's done in very jokingly ironic ways. Sort of like when you see the memes of the virgin versus the Chad and it basically shows the Chad is all-powerful and super mighty. In this case, Dilwig is that Giga Chad, and I put the Giga make to emphasize how much bigger he is and how much of a passion I have for Lavi Dilwig. And he is, an, and, and I can say that in a purely heterosexual way, he's a very handsome man in his day. Well, yes, he was. And he was not only handsome in terms of physical appearance, he was also handsome in terms of the way he handled those balls. What? He was a receiver. Uh, okay. I heard he handled receiver. those balls. And I'm thinking, what the hell are we talking about here? What kind of show is this? Now, a big reason why you don't really hear about him today is not only because he's not in the Hall of Fame, which is why he's Well, okay, well, that's place. my first question, actually. And I'm sort of glad you, you, you want to open up with that. Why is... Mr. Dilweg not talked about more because in Packers lore, that's why I wanted to open up with the fact that he is in that their first ever Hall of Fame class. How did he get forgotten? Forgotten. Two words, Don Hudson. That's your reason. That's the reason happened. why is because Laverne Dilwig was truly one of the most remarkable players of his days. In fact, looking forward, looking at it, he's only one of a couple players in that decade to be part of six. I repeat, six. 1920s all decade teams Mm -hmm. you don't those people don't grow on trees just saying one is impressive but six of them Mm -hmm. but the real question is like how can someone like that be forgotten well it's because the packers took don hudson and don hudson compared to those times especially now was better than any any receiver anyone has ever seen this is when the offenses were spread out way more and by the end of his career don hudson had 99 touchdowns which was 70 more than the next person mm-hmm. yeah which uh, was yeah, the I, reason why he's forgotten because okay. hudson was so much more dominant 
to the point where everyone else that was also in during that time was just forgotten about. But with Dillweg, though, we still have a player who is a three-time NFL champion. Three-time consecutive NFL champion. Right, uh, 1929, 1930, 1931. Uh, so your, your, your theory is because he was an end when they weren't necessarily doing as much stuff with that. And, and, I, and that's, that's, a, that's a very good point that you sort of made. And Hudson, and to uh, just to sort of like add a little bit of flavor on that, Vinny's also part of a group of, of us we put together, I'm going to do some blatant self-promotion here. Uh, we've also created the United States Athletic Hall of Fame, uh, which uh, includes myself, uh, Evan Nolan, uh, co-host of the Hall of Fame show, and uh, a few Olympians and former NFL players, I mean, athlete, athletes, journalists. And Hudson is one of the nominees for the first ever class. So just sort of like putting him in historical perspective and I can see how someone like him would completely overshadow Dilweg. So do you think also, too, in terms of the Pro Football Hall of Fame, because the Pro Football Hall of Fame didn't get started until 1963 or 64? 1963. Okay. So in 1963, so you, you, and you were a big proponent of larger classes really from the beginning, because if we look back at the Pro Football Hall of Fame, they've never had a large class until recently, realistically. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, with the centennial year. Uh, so even the first class wasn't as big as what we just saw. So even in the seventies, they weren't playing catch up at all. Nope. No, in fact, many times, like we don't see this now, but back then there would be times where you'd get your five modern finals. I think back then it might've been six. And if you didn't get 80%, you weren't there. And that doesn't happen now. Cause if you were to have that situation now, there would be so much backlash. Well, there, there were also classes of only four people in the 70s. Oh, we, yeah. Like, hell, even like times like four people, like four was the minimum. The maximum was seven. Right. And it only happened like a couple times. I think 1986 it was. I think it had Len Dawson was one of the few examples. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I mean, it, it does happen. So, like, this is a case where here's a player, despite playing on a team that, and I, I know there's a lot of people saying, well, the Packers are well represented or the Steelers are well represented or the Raiders are well represented, or the Cowboys. And Vinny and I can both tell you that, yes, they are, and, and not completely. In my personal opinion, you should not punish someone because they played on a team with many Hall of Famers, both coaches, players, et cetera. At the same time, you also should not penalize people for playing on a team where everyone sucked, but yet you were really, really good. I mm -hmm. think... Yes, I completely get that point that there is a hesitation to add Lambeau Packers. However, at the same time, you also run the risk of like, really, you're going to leave out someone that's been a part of six all decade teams and a guy that's has better numbers than people in that era mm -hmm. when he played. That sounds pretty, that sounds very short sighted. Okay. Honestly, well, Let me ask you this then, Ben. Uh, do you think though that sometimes plays, plays a, a part in that? Evan and I talked a lot about uh, how Alan, we think, it, this is something he brought up, and I, I agreed with him, that Alan Fanica had to wait an extra year because of Bill Cower. Wasn't just because of, it wasn't just because of Bill Cower, Kirk. It was because of Tori Palomalo as well as... So Palomalo was in the same year. Yeah, it was all in the same year. And the reason why they went with Hutchinson over Fanica, even though Fanica mm -hmm. did have moral pros to his name, is because... You're going to get those people, right or wrong, that are going to say, oh, Steelers bias, too much Steelers, you're ignoring the Vikings or the Seahawks. Okay. Or So then do we have that case here with Dillweg? Partially, but not entirely. Because I think with Dillweg, a lot of Packers fans are not pushing for him. Most Packers fans, if they're pushing for a senior, it's going to be Sterling Sharp. Um, and if they're going to ask for a modern, it's going to be – you know, it's it's going to be Leroy Butler. And, you know, when it comes to contributors, we'll get to eventual Packers contributors down the line, but they don't even mention them, mention them because they were so way beyond when they were even alive. Mm -hmm. So even though Dilwig is a Packer, he's in a very unique situation because Packers fans barely even know he exists. Okay. Do you see that changing anytime soon? When, it, when they eventually expand the number of people to 10 and they have another senior or two, 
that is when I think Dillwig will make it because I think in the next year or two before 2025, they're probably just going to be putting in seniors from like the 70s onwards and then afterwards, who knows? Because mm -hmm. I don't want to – it's the same thing with Buddy Parker. It's like, you know, you, you have all the people right there. You shouldn't penalize people because they played in an era before you were born. I mean, we trust that you're the best at doing this, but ignoring it would go against the same ideas that you say you are for. And that's not me trying to diss on them or anything. I'm just saying in general, you need to put Lavi Dilwig in the Hall of Fame because – you should not ignore those errors before you were born. Like it or not, the NFL did not start when you were born. It started in 1920, and professional football itself started 30 years prior. You got to honor Dillwig, because if you're not going to honor Dillwig, you might as well not even honor those pre-1960s individuals. Simple as that. Well, to be fair, maybe somebody who's listening might have been born in 1920. That is true. That That is true, but... Chances are that person is not part of the Hall of Fame board. That, that's, that's very possible. So uh, you've obviously researched this far greater than I have. Is there anyone in his family or is there a group pushing for this that you're aware of? Packers fans themselves are not pushing for him because, okay. like I said, when it comes to Packers, they're mostly advocating for Sterling Sharp when it comes to seniors. Anyone beyond like the 80s they don't even know about really. I mean, Jerry Kramer was like the only one and everyone else right. didn't really matter to them, but no offense. I'm just saying still, but no, that's fine. Yeah. there are, are a couple people that I could look out to the number one person I'm thinking of. Maybe we should get on the show. Sure. Is his grandson, Anthony, his grandson, Tony Dillwig, who actually played for the Packers, even started a game or two for them in the late eighties, early nineties. Um, He's a real estate contractor now. Um, I'm pretty sure if given the opportunity, he would be willing to make the case for him. I forgot her name, but I know her, his uh, granddaughter is also on Twitter. Mm -hmm. um, she's not really that active. I know she does follow me, but she's not really that active on Twitter. So I think if you were to contact anyone from Dillwig's family, I would suggest very strongly try to see if you can reach out to Tony. He'd be, I'm pretty sure he'd be more than willing to advocate for his grandfather. Yeah, and this this isn't without precedence, actually, for us. Uh, we had the pleasure of talking with uh, Jerry Kramer's daughter uh, some time ago before uh, he got in. Uh, Alicia Kramer, who just a class class act all the way. I really enjoyed my conversation with her uh, that, that I was able to have. And she actually arranged a conversation with, with me and her dad, which was... A highlight of, of my life, I have to admit. What was it like speaking to Jerry Kramer? Uh, I wrote afterwards, and uh, I remember actually writing this. Jerry is one of the few people that I ever felt better about myself because I, I got to talk to him. He just gave that off. He gave that aura. He was like the epitome of a Hall of Fame snub. Like you could never, like they even said, Joe Horgan said that 25% or he jokingly see 90% of all the emails he got, they were very, very harsh emails, were about Jerry Kramer. Well, that, yeah, and this, this isn't about Jerry Kramer, so, so, but I, I, I do want to put a, like a bow onto this, uh, onto that particular conversation. When Alicia asked me, like, and she said, like, well, Kirk, why do you think he should be in? I said, well, pretty simply, if the same people who thought that he, that he was good enough to be in the 50th anniversary team don't and he's the only one not in it there's there seems to be a disconnect i mean that that, that that says it all to me right there like and it's roughly the same people uh but again, but again this is about uh about, about lobby uh what more what if you were to sort of like do like that elevator conversation thing uh with with a hall of fame voter and so you have like that 30 seconds how do you convince him I convinced him by saying that Lavi Dillwig, during that time, you had four main ends of his day. Besides him, it was Wayne Milner, Red Bagro, and Bill Hewitt. Um, Dillwig had nine seasons. Milner had seven, but Bagro and Hewitt also had nine. During that time, Dillwig was a part of three championship teams. He also led the league in a higher yards per catch than those three other guys, as well as yards in general. He also was responsible for um, 27 interceptions. The other three combined only have three. And as a result, he also led a league in interceptions 
twice, which the other ones, only one of them was able to do, and that was Bue Hewitt, but only one time. Also, he has been a consensus All-Pro six times. The only one with even close to that much was Bill Hewitt was five. And in terms of total All-Pro, he's a part of eight. You could talk, you could say about Packers and all that other stuff, but at the same time, you can't respect the 1920s, especially for someone like Laverne Dillwood, who's a part of not one, not two, not three, not four, not five, but a total of six all-decade teams. Mm -hmm. Having him out would not only be bad for those Lambeau Packers, but bad for the legacy of 1920s NFL football. There is no Don Hudson without Laverne Dillwood. Simple as that. Nice. All right. Well done. Well, Vinny, I can't wait to see who you're going to send me next. Uh, hopefully it's someone I've heard of. Because <laughs> last week it sure as hell wasn't. Hey, you know, I'm all about those people that most people don't even know about. How Even for Dillwig, most people don't well, even know yes. about. Yeah, this, this is someone who I was disappointed that he was not chosen. Before you knew who, before you even knew who I was, did you know who he was? Peripherally. But not Peripherally. 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 But now, how much do you know about him? A lot more. As a much lot more, and you're a big part of that. I'll, 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 give, I'll throw that out at you. Absolutely. I've said it many times on other shows that when it comes to the history of sports, do not let Vinny's age fool you. Yeah. Vinny, Vinny's important. a student of the game. Yeah, you kind of need to be. I mean, I feel like I need to be because if not, then, I mean, listen, this guy has been dead for this guy was a u.s house of you this, this man was a part of the u.s house of representatives not no politics no 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 politics as well i'm just saying that he's, yeah, he's know, a guy right? that's been a part of public life in the state of wisconsin mm -hmm. but he's also been dead for five decades i mean so he honestly, hasn't voted they, in the last 50 years well that's not good <laughs> um but in general like he is a guy that i do feel like his name really needs to come up yep. even no more i agree with more. you I, I mean, granted, not only just the 20s guys, but, you know, 30s, 40s, and, of course, mm -hmm. pre-NFL, all that stuff. But, Dillard, when it comes to, again, this is why, especially when it comes to pre-1960s NFL players, he is my Giga Chad. Okay. So, so he's your most wanted pre-merger or pre-World War II? Pre, easy, my most wanted pre-World War II. Pre-60s, Yes. Pre-merger, I'm leaning towards yes as well. I'm not including pre pre NFL because there are people I want there that that are more than Dillard. But when it comes to yeah. at least pre World War II football, he's definitely my guy easily. Okay. All right, fair when enough. it comes to players, listen, I know a lot of people know me as a contributor guy. Here's a player for you. I hope you guys like it. <laughs> Sounds good. All right. Well, with that, we're the hall of uh, the Vinny show is closed until we open up again. Stay safe, everybody. And there's a lot more content on the oh, I'm going to call this a network, the not in hall of fame.com network. Take care, everyone. That's a lot, guys.